This presentation provides a brief overview of the time warp synchronization algorithm that is widely used for optimistic parallel discrete event simulation. Simulation is a widely used scientific method that is used in a large number of domains such as digital logic design, study and analysis of network protocols, or even in biological and ecological systems. Immaterial of the domain in which the discrete event simulation is used, the system is characterized as a set of interacting logical processes. These logical processes model the temporal characteristics of the system under study, and each logical process has a state that contains variables and data structures that are used to model different properties of the system under study. The logical processes interact with each other by exchanging timestamped events. Notice that an event is a timestamp message, and the timestamp indicates when the event is to be processed by the receiving logical process. It is important to note that here the timestamps are virtual timestamps or simulation time and not real time. Each logical process is required to process events in timestamp order. In order to facilitate this process, each logical process typically maintains a scheduler or a priority queue in which events are stored in timestamp order and processed. So for example, here the initial processing will focus on events at time 2 and they will be processed. And now as a processing of those events, assume that an event at time 3 is generated. This event is inserted into the priority queue and then the events are processed in timestamp order. And this process continues until the simulation ends. Event processing can take quite some CPU time. Some of the event processing can take thousands of microseconds on a modern gigahertz CPUs. Large models can have thousands of these logical processes exchanging millions of events, and the runtime of these simulations can be pretty long. Consequently, parallel simulation methods are used. In a parallel simulation, multiple computers are used and the model is partitioned across these computers to accelerate the simulation. And interactions between the computers or compute nodes is performed on high-speed networks or high-speed specialized interconnects to make the parallel simulation run fast. Keep in mind that a parallel simulation must continue to maintain and adhere to the causality constraints of a traditional sequential simulation. That means events must be processed in the order of timestamps. The challenge with parallel simulation is how to tell if it is safe to process an event. So for example, consider a parallel simulation running on two compute nodes. Assume that we have events at time 5, 8, 9. So assume that all of the pending events up to virtual time 4 have been processed. And now the key question that we are asking is, is it safe to now process an event at virtual time 5? The challenge here is that we could potentially get an event at time 4, maybe because there is an event in the network fabric, or maybe the computer's other compute nodes are a little bit behind, and they're going to start sending an event at time 4, and we just haven't received it yet. So this is a key challenge in uh, parallel simulation, is when is it safe to process an event? Keep in mind, if we do process event at time 5, and then we later on we get an event at time 4, then we would have violated causality and our simulation would no longer be correct. This is where synchronization comes into the picture. The objective of all synchronization algorithm is to maintain causality in a parallel simulation. There are two key strategies that have been used for synchronization. The more traditional one is called conservative synchronization, where events are processed only when it is guaranteed to be safe to do so. Different strategies have been used to preserve causality. A commonly used one is to exchange null messages that tell when it is safe to process an event, or they define an upper bound of time on each of these logical processes. 
A more recent approach is to use optimistic synchronization. Here, events are processed as soon as they're available, as soon as possible to process them. And this kind of operation can lead to temporal, temporary violations of causality. Causal violations are detected when an event called a straggler with a lower time is received, and different approaches are used to recover from such causal violations. Time warp is a commonly used algorithm for optimistic synchronization. In a time warp synchronized parallel simulation, the, each logical process creates checkpoints or saves its state. Causal violations are detected when a straggler event is received, and the LP uses a process called rollback to recover from causal violations. Let's take a quick look at how this operates. Of course, there is a logical process along with the input priority queue that maintains the events to be processed. Each logical process maintains its local virtual time, which indicates the simulation time up to which it has processed events. In addition, each logical process maintains a state queue and an output queue. The state queue maintains checkpoints of its, the states versus the output queue maintains copies of events that it has sent to other logical processes in the simulation. So event processing proceeds as usual. So for example, each logical process takes the next available lowest timestamp event and starts processing it, updates its local virtual time to the corresponding time, generates whatever output events that it needs to generate, and at the end of the cycle, the state of the logical process is saved. And this operation continues. For example, let's say we get a event at time nine. Notice that this event's timestamp nine is in the future when compared to the current local virtual time. So in this case, the event is simply enqueued into the priority queue and the event processing continues. In this case, the next event is eight. So event eight is at timestamp eight is processed. Local virtual time is updated. It generates output events and the state is saved. And this operation continues. Now let us assume that we get a event at a lower timestamp than eight. And this is called a straggler event. And when a straggler event is received, it triggers rollback operations. So for example, here, the event at time six is less than the local virtual time of eight, and this triggers a rollback. In this case, there are three steps that are involved. First, the state of the logical process is restored. In this example, the previous state that is to which we can roll back is at time phi. So the logical process rolls back its local virtual time back to time phi. Next, all of the output events that it has generated after time five are no longer valid and they all have to be canceled. And here, anti-messages are generated and sent to other logical processes to cancel out all of these prior events that were sent because they are no longer valid after a rollback. Once the anti-messages are sent, the events are now reprocessed. So the processing of even eight is undone. The events are inserted in the correct timestamp order, and then the processing continues. So the next event at timestamp six is obtained from the input queue. It is processed, output events are generated, and the state at time six is saved to recover from any potential rollbacks that may occur in the future. And this operation continues at each logical process in the parallel simulation until the simulation completes. Note that as simulation progresses, each logical process has lots of unused or unnecessary states and events in input and output queues. And these have to be garbage collected to ensure that the parallel simulation doesn't run out of memory. For this, a concept called global virtual time is used to perform garbage collection. GVT provides a global lower bound up to where a rollback can occur. Note that this is global in the sense that it goes across all of the logical process in the parallel simulation. For example, assume that GVT is now eight. In this case, 
all of the states and events up to time 8 are no longer useful and they can be garbage collected. And this garbage collection process happens periodically to ensure that the parallel simulation does not run out of memory. So when you look at a rollback in an optimistic simulation, each time it occurs, the rollbacks kind of ripple through the simulation, restoring the causality. And this ripple happens because of anti-messages that are sent uh, from one logical process to another, and these restore causality in the system. And way to think about this is that virtual time proceeds in a non-linear fashion in a time warp synchronized parallel simulation due to rollbacks. So for example, assume here that the x-axis shows the real or physical time and the y-axis shows virtual time. In a sequential simulation, you would expect somewhat of a linear uh, relationship between the virtual time and simulation time. Um, that as time flows, virtual time changes. Assume that we're doing parallel simulation using two compute nodes. Here you would expect the simulation to complete in half the time because we are using two times uh, the compute power. So in theory, you would expect a curve like that, as shown in the green line. However, with a time warp simulation, the time does not proceed linearly, but has nonlinear relationships due to rollbacks where virtual time suddenly decreases and then increases, decreases, and increases. And this happens until the simulation is complete. And of course, GVT tracks kind of the lower bound on where the rollback can occur so that garbage collection can be performed. And this is how a typical time warp simulation proceeds. Let's do a quick summary and recap. Time warp is an optimistic synchronization protocol. Here the idea is to process events as soon as possible, and this may cause temporary violations and causality. Causal violations are detected when a straggler message is received. Time warp uses a state saving and rollback mechanism to recover from causal violations. Keep in mind that when anti-messages are generated, they may in turn cause rollbacks at other, at other logical processes in the uh, simulation. And this causes the rollbacks to kind of ripple through the parallel simulation, restoring causality in the system. Time warp requires a GVT-based garbage collection mechanism to prune states and events that are no longer necessary. And a key advantage of time warp is that it effectively extracts and utilizes parallelism that is inherent in a model. It is shown to be very scalable and efficient. Uh, several researchers have reported time warp simulations on one million cores on a supercomputing platform. So it is very scalable, and that's one of the key advantages of time warp. There are some drawbacks in terms of state saving and rollbacks that can be significant overheads. However, many optimizations and strategies have been proposed to reduce the overheads in time warp simulations and ensure a scalable and efficient parallel simulation method.